Penny and Guy from Midwinter Minis here, and in this video, well, I'm not really sure how to describe this one, this thing, whatever it is, is the culmination of loads of different ideas. Let me give you a bit of context. Last year, a few people on Instagram were making cool 40k terrain from water pistols. It was called the Grim Squirt Challenge. What? <laughs> Weird names aside, I thought it was a great idea, and I ordered a couple of water pistols to try it out for myself. And like most of my amazing ideas, I shelved it in the time between me ordering it and waiting for it to arrive. So with Water Pistol Terrain on the back burner, I've recently been planning out a new series of Warhammer 40k battle reports, with a view to putting them out more regularly as they're some of the most viewed stuff on the channel. Woo! I'll tell you more about the battle report plans later in the video, but the important thing you need to know right now is that I want them to take place in an arena. In my mind it would combine loads of cool sci-fi and cultural elements. Speedball 2, Jurassic Park, Alien, grimdark gothic architecture, a gladiatorial coliseum. Wait a minute, could I actually combine these two ideas into one? Make a crazy Warhammer arena using cheap water pistols to add loads of quick structure and texture? It might just work. That's a big project though, eh? Too much to make in a couple of days and create a video for, unless you had some serious motivation. Maybe even some competition? Hey Jeremy, Guy from Midwinter Minis here. I love your fantasy builds, but you know me, I'm a 40k fanatic. I challenge you to make some grimdark sci-fi terrain, but there's a twist. There's always a twist. We're only allowed to use water pistols and toy guns. I mean, you can use glue too and paint, I suppose. Anyway, let's do this. Good luck, lots of love, Guy. P.S. I hope you enjoy losing. Brave last words for a dead man. Ha! Jeremy from Black Magic Craft on board. I actually have a deadline to make this thing. Right, so where to begin? First off, we obviously needed something to build the structure on. After weighing up all the options, we thought 12mm MDF would be the best way forward. Light enough to handle, but heavy enough to resist warping. We don't really have any fancy power tools that I would trust Guy to use, but our local B&Q cut a big board down to size for us. The key bit for this video is that we now have two 44 by 30 inch sheets, perfect for combat patrol sized games. One will be the actual ground, and the other we'll be using for the backdrop. We also got some small side bits to box everything in and make it really immersive, but making those and somehow attaching them all together is a problem for future Guy and Penny. Anyway, to stop this board from warping with all the paint we'll be applying, I gave both sides two coats of gesso. Now, I always thought this stuff was just a kind of paint for priming canvases, but it's actually really fine plaster. It makes a perfect surface for applying all kinds of paint, and it protects whatever you've put it on from being degraded by oils or water in the paint you use. You learn something new every day. While I left the board to dry, I started cutting up the water pistols. We have two of these big pump action things, boink, one sun bleach from being left outside, and one nice and new. We also have this little pistol that we use to scare away cats from our garden. We don't want our dog to kill them, and she definitely would, even though she looks really adorable. Anyway, the big water pistols were mostly held together with tiny screws, so I just removed them all and the casing just came apart. I usually mute all the camera audio, but this bit was pretty good. So there's loads of water pistol bits, ready to be carved up into new shapes. There are some parts that will need to be cut in half too, like the actual pressure chambers. Using a cutting disc on my rotary tool, I started hacking everything up. This was super messy and some of the material really kicked up a lot of plastic particles everywhere. It went all over my camera too, so I didn't film too much of this bit. I made sure to wear a proper respirator though. You don't want to be breathing in all this plastic dust. The Codex Astartes does not support this action. Once we had an appropriately sized pile of square cut water pistol parts, I started drawing out an idea of what the arena might look like. Even rough shapes can help you plan out where you want things to go. I already had an idea in my head of what I wanted it to look like, and Guy was faffing about too much with vague ideas, so I pretty much just took over at this stage. Big brain time, we marked off the space for the floor to slot in so we can actually attach them to each other at some point without everything getting crushed. We tried a few layouts by dry fitting components just to see what it would look like, and when we decided that a particular bit had to go somewhere, we glued it down. For most of the parts, we used Gorilla Glue. It works in quite a cool way. You slightly dampen one side, apply a bit of glue to the other, and put some pressure on it while it cures. After about 10 minutes, it's sturdy enough that you won't accidentally move it with light touches, but after a few hours, it's rock solid. 
We sanded the undersides of the bits as we stuck them and weighed them down with dumbbell locking nuts. To flesh out the actual structural part of the building and add a bit of the gothic grimdark vibe, we used some Pegasus Hobbies cathedral bits. I'm fairly sure the rules stated only water pistol parts. And paint and glue and stuff. But not pre-bought architectural kits. Well, we're stuck down now, so it's too late. Cheater. Anyway, while we're properly cheating, we also use some plastic conduit cable stuff to add that Giga aesthetic, connecting them up to some of the water pistol hose bits. We also use some bits and pieces from that Tenalog factory kit from the Pile of Shame. We actually tried to build the model itself, but it was too fiddly for its own good and we gave up and went to bed. It's much better for just adding little details to stuff like this. We both wanted a big centerpiece logo for the arena, and the Imperial Aquila seemed like a good choice. We printed it off, stuck it on some foam board with a glue stick, carefully cut out the parts of the craft knife and the rotary tool, and stuck it in pride of place. To help with the ramshackle look the arena was developing, we used some modelling compound from Geek Gaming. You know, Luke's awesome craft channel. Audu guy! See, I've still got it. Still got it. Basically, you mix this stuff up with a bit of water, and it turns into this sort of diseased, pale tuna mayonnaise-like stuff. After about 20 minutes, it's rock hard and can be painted. We used it to plug the gaps between some of the water pistol bits and the gothic walls. Because it dries so hard and so quickly, we used it to add some easy detail that would otherwise be hard to stick down, like this chicken wire. I think it was at this point you were guilt tripping me that we hadn't used enough water pistols for a literal water pistol challenge, so we quickly nipped out and got some more. After loads more sticking, it was time for the moment of truth. Would it all fall off as soon as we made it vertical? No! Woo! Right, outside into the garden to give it a good all over prime. I hit the rocky bits with this plasticoat stone effect stuff, and once that was dry, everything got a spray with Rust Oleum Grey Matte Surface Primer. Once it's all a uniform colour, you can actually start to visualise it as a real thing, rather than just a collection of junk that we glued onto some wood, which it pretty much is. Not gonna lie, I think it looks great. What a great job I have done. Okay, time to get some paint on. We blacked out the sky with Mars Black craft paint and did some panel lines and pre-shading with Mars Black ink using the airbrush. As that was drying, I did a heavy dry brush of white all over to catch the details and make it nice and clear what everything was. Just one day left to get this thing painted up before I have to put this video out. Otherwise Jeremy will get you. I think he's gonna get me anyway. Well, I mean, you did disqualify yourself. And speaking of Jeremy, if you haven't already subscribed to Black Magic Craft, you absolutely need to get on the case. It's an inspiring, high quality scratch building and DIY terrain channel I've pilfered, uh, borrowed, loads of my best ideas from. After you're done here, go and check out his water pistol challenge and tell him Guy and Penny sent you. I started adding some colour by airbrushing sepia ink onto the walls and red ink onto the pistol parts. Ink is good when you've underpainted because it's quite transparent so you can still see all of that shading and highlighting showing through. I also blasted a bit of yellow and green ink just to add a bit of variety and then painted up a few key parts silver like the little pipes, vents, platforms and stuff. Once I was happy all of that was dry, I applied my DIY dip wash all over and went to bed. And in the morning, I mixed up a very pale brown paint, sort of a warm off-white, and dry brushed everything to give it an aged, worn look. And then I used a bright orange paint to add some rust effects on random bits of metal. I wanted these big columns on the gate to look like they're full of glowy energy stuff, so I made Guy base coat all the internal sections with a deep red. Then he airbrushed progressively lighter shades of orange and yellow, focusing more on the centre of each section with each pass. He then used yellow and white ink and a fine detail brush to paint some little lightning sparks inside. I didn't want to just leave the background a boring flat black colour, so I mixed violet paint into the black that I used already to base coat it and painted all of the flat bits. I then just used violet and then pink paints in sweeping figure eight motions to paint a stormy alien looking sky. Guy bought a few of these USB lights on eBay because we both thought they looked like stadium floodlights already, but they're insanely bright. Too bright to look at while you're playing a game of 40k. Now, in my mind, these four torch-looking things would have had some kind of cool light effect like flickering tea light smoke and fire. But we ran out of time, so we just airbrushed some white ink, masked off with some bits of paper to make it look like they're big spotlights firing up into the sky. Much quicker. 
Now before we show you the glamour shots, we'd quickly like to thank our newest patrons. Bailey Gole, Will Dunn, Chris Ridley, Vaclav Tater, Hulkamus, John Harvey, Innes Tam Morris, Harder Than Jesus, Anne Atwood, Ian McPhail, Derek Simon, Jamie Brighton, Eric Sullivan, Emma, Grayson Lyles, Mr. Grimm, Dunami Art, Ronald Robinson, Cassandra Connors, Mark Urban, Joe Jordan, Lilith Tundras, Alex McFunken, Steve Wolford, Christopher Larius, Greg Rolston, Miniature Leo, Harold Hayward, The Squeaky Moose, Kaha, Lorcan McSD, Sebastian Wolf, Kyle S. Okay, let's take a look. I don't want to sound too proud of myself, I mean us, but I think it's really good and I'm really happy with it. We both sort of wanted there to be a gate in the middle, but it was a bit too awkward to cut out accurately and would have taken too long. We're already cutting it a bit fine with this video as it is. That's a pretty decent three day project. This has made me really excited to start the new series of battle reports actually. I think you should probably tell people about those. Oh yeah, yeah. So basically, imagine Mortal Kombat mixed with the FIFA World Cup in space. In space. It's going to be a knockout tournament with loads of special guest armies and fun stuff, same rules for each game, kind of like an actual sporting event but with way more fatalities. So if you like the sound of that, be sure to subscribe and we'll probably get it started at the end of August. We have to finish the rest of the arena. September. It'll start in September. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Hold on, hold on. What about the t-shirts, Guy? Oh yeah, the t-shirts. Official Midwinter Minis Wiggly Boy t-shirts designed by our friend Kenny from Next Level Painting. Stop staring at my Wiggly Boys. Any colour you want, as long as it's black. Check out the links in the description if you fancy getting one, and we'll catch you next time. Stole your line. Bye for now. Bye! Where are you going to put this once we build the rest? It's not allowed to stay on the dining table forever, honestly. Can we put it on the wall? Like art? No.